everybody welcome back so as you can see I have this uh, singer 27 she is completely stripped I pulled her out of my e-tank this morning I did not have my camera up here so basically sorry about my fingers basically when I pull them out of the tank I need to get them processed really quickly or else flash rust will just start going all over the place and so basically what that means is as soon as I pull it out of the tank, I take it over and with my air compressor, I blow it off as good as I can. And then I take it over to my workbench and with a big wire wheel on a drill, I come in here and I knock anything that has not come off already, I will knock that off. Um, sometimes there's like little residual paint and I don't think that's paint actually, but that's what the wire wheel will do. And then I'll use a smaller wire wheel on a Dremel to come into the smaller areas and everything, okay? And I got underneath too. It still has a little bit of paint under there, but I'm not as crazy about, you know, working every little bit of paint off the bottom because if it's a little bit, you know, uneven surface down there, who is going to know? But I still need to get this masked off. Oh, and after I have all that done, I bring her into my paint booth in here because I have this heater. And I just turned it off because it was warm. But putting her into a room with a heat right next to her just helps any residual dampness come off so I don't have to worry about any rest. Um, up here is her wheel. Here is her belt guard. This belt guard's kind of rough. Um, this is an older machine, a 1905 machine, and if you can see, some of the metal, it's actually kind of rough there, but it's a cool character. So, you know, we leave it as is. Um, but what I need to do now is I'm feeling like painting, and she is completely dry. She's been in here for about four hours, dried off, and so I'm going to go ahead and get her masked up to get her primer and her color coat on. So I wanted to give you a quick look at the paints. I am going to be using a filler primer because she's an iron machine and I find that works really well. For her color coat, we are going with Rust-Oleum's Shimmering Amethyst, which is going to be really cool. It's a darker color and this is a full coverage paint. It's not a two-layered paint, but I don't know if you can see. It's supposed to have little shimmers in there. So no base coat is said to be needed. So it's just going to be primer and then at least a couple coats of this. I'll see once I have it on how the coverage goes. But I need to get uh, my wheel masked and this. Um, the belt guard, I'm painting the entire thing, so it's still inside the booth. So let me go ahead and get started and I'll show you what she looks like when she's all masked up. I am working on getting her masked up here, as you can see. Oh, and this is a little shrink tube. They come in handy. But I wanted to point out something I don't think I have before is these little scrapers with a razor blade are fabulous at this stage because sometimes they can pick up things that I can miss running my hand over it, that my eye can definitely miss. Um, just getting extra little pieces of paint or something off that I might have missed before. You can see little bits there at the tip. Um, that The thing is, it, it won't show up much right now, but as soon as you put primer on, it shows up a lot if you miss anything. And if you can see that little bit on the blade, if I can get that off at this point, it's just going to save me time and make it look better later. So I'm doing this. Let's see, is that paint? I don't think it is. Let's see, running the blade over. We can just make sure it's nice and smooth to start with. So anyhow, let me finish getting her masked up. And also at this point, I am, you know, shoving my grocery bags in there and everything. And... She needs to be oiled, 100% she needs to, but I don't wanna put any oil on her until after she is painted. Because even if I just put some in here, there's a chance it could drip, which means there's a chance it could get down here. And uh, paint won't stick to oil, so there you go. So I will do that after, but right now, yes, yeah, she is a very, a very dry little girl. 
So in the nose here, because all of this is stripped also, I want, actually want to paint inside of here, but I'm going to mask off this uh, tip of the main shaft here so that that does not get any paint on it. And, you know, all of the little places I'm going to be uh, putting my little plugs in. So let me go ahead and keep going. Okay, I wanted to show you underneath here, um, at the bottom of this opening, you know, packed and masked off. Everything that has threads, I'm trying to plug up. That's where the hinges go. Um, I'm gonna have to put a tiny little plug right there. So this is where the pivot points go. That is plugged up. Um, up here, I've got you know the little nostrils plugged at the bottom. I'm going to put a little piece of tape in these holes at the top. Um, but I want to keep this as open as I can so I can get that painted. And uh, if you're going to do this, this is a good chance to tip it all the way back and get a good look at this underneath part because that's easy to miss things. So I've worked at cleaning that up again. Um, once I get this done, and I'm almost done masking, I'm going to go ahead and give it at least one coat, maybe two, of the filler primer and let that dry for probably about 10 minutes and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, so I have a good healthy primer coat on. I did primer the entire bottom and basically what I do is I tip it up um, towards the nose. I like lift it up this way and hold it up so I can spray the bottom first and get all of that sprayed first. I'm still at this point not sure if I'm going to color coat the bottom, but at least it has a healthy coat of primer on it, so it's protected. Okay, after that I can come back up, and if while it's tipped up, you can remember, that's a great time to spray underneath here and everything because you can get it at a good angle. Or down below, you know. This is my little stool that I do sewing machines on. I love this because basically it's from a chair. It's from a chair I wasn't using and then uh, took the, the seat off and I just put a little piece of board on here. But that way I can get up right next to it and spray up at these angles and things that I couldn't if it was a complete table, you know? So that is what this is here. Just, you know, the base from a spinny chair. Over here, the wheel, it's the same thing where I spray the bottom first, and so I will spray the bottom side first, okay, once, and then I do that the very first thing, and then I go and I coat everything else. The camera's doing weird things in this light. Then, I, it's usually dry enough that I can flip it over to the right side, spray the top, okay? And then over here's the little belt guard. So that's looking pretty good. I have been over here shaking up my can of paint. So I have, I got my timer going on my phone, um, about another four and a half minutes before I can come back and touch this. Basically, I'm gonna give, my, I give myself probably around 10 minutes, which is very long for a primer. But I come in with a clean microfiber cloth and give it a wipe with my microfiber cloth, which is enough to smooth down any roughness in the texture of the primer itself. We're not trying to get out every little imperfection because you know, it's a old iron machine, those things are gonna be there. But it's gonna smooth down the paint so that when I come back with my color coat, it'll lay a lot smoother. All right, I've got the first coat on and I can tell it's gonna take, you know, at least two, probably at least three coats but it's pretty cool. Um, and like I said, it is shimmering amethyst and it goes on very differently from other Rust-Oleum paints. If you're used to just a basic Rust-Oleum spray paint, it has a different feel to it, but it's really cool. And I can see the shimmer already. I don't know if you can, but it's gonna take a few coats. So basically I'm gonna set my timer for 15 minutes, come back. When I come back, I'll flip this wheel you know, so I can do the front. The back of the wheel, I gave a really solid coat. It's only gonna get one big coat on the back because that's not seen very much. So I can focus on the front of it. And here's the little belt guard. So, so far this is a really fun paint to use. 
Okay, so this is two coats, so I hope that you can see. We have some color change going on. It's like a combination of purple and kind of a blue, but it does have the sparkle, okay? Now there was one or two little imperfections in the metal itself. And right there, see those two little dots? That is in the casting of the metal itself. I could not smooth that down. And it did show, but honestly, it's a little bit of character. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like after two coats. I am probably going to give it one more coat, you know, just to make sure that everything is lovely. So, there's as close as I can get with that. And I think that when I do clear coat on top of this, it's even going to make it even more exciting. So, there's two coats. Okay, so her third coat is on. So nice. I highly recommend three coats. It, it's purple, but it wants to be electric blue. But it's purple, but electric blue would be a fun accessory, you know? It's so neat. I really like this. So I need to let this dry for a couple days. Um, I need to start pulling together her decals. All of the images I'm going to be using are still on my computer, so I need to get all that done. And so next time you see her, we're going to be putting those on. Hello and welcome back. It's actually been a while. I've gotten a lot of stuff done, like you can see over here, but I'll tell you more about that later. I want to talk about the trouble with dark paint and decals because I think that a lot of people don't really understand the implications of dark paint. So let me show you what happens. There are two kinds of decal backing. There is clear and there is white and white comes out like a blank sheet of white. I'm gonna go get a piece of that for you. The problem with white, well, there's several problems with white. One of them is it is extremely unstable. It becomes just about the consistency of a wet square of toilet paper. And you can figure out how difficult it is to straighten out and manipulate a wet square of toilet paper. It's about that same amount of difficulty with white um, water slide decal paper. So let me go get a little piece of that. Got my little sample piece here, but before I do that, all right, so I have this lovely dragon down there, which looks simple, but I want to tell you about the process I had to go through to get that to show up. Here is another little dragon. Looks just like it, right? Well, this is printed on a clear water slide decal paper, okay? And that clear water slide decal transfer paper is much more stable. It's much more like the, the type of consistency of what you would get when you purchase some decals, okay? But what I want you to understand is when you're using a dark background, I don't care if it's blue, I don't care if it's purple, I don't care if it's black, look at what happens. See, you can see it perfectly there. It's gone. The image is, is disappeared. And the reason is because, in general, printers don't print white. They assume that you are printing on a white piece of paper, okay? So they're going to adjust their coloring based on the paper is white, so you'll be able to see these colors. But when you do a decal, it goes like that, which makes it impossible to see, okay? So with that, this is a little scrap of some white. And I just wanna show you, this um, is very, very finicky, okay? And you saw that I could put this on and remove it and put it on and remove it. And it's almost like a very, very lightweight vinyl, almost. This stuff, however, is not. It is very prone to crack, to wrinkle, to just, you know, go crying into the wilderness, which is what I feel like doing when I'm working with it. Um, and there's this, like, this tiny fine line between it's wet enough to slide off of the backing and it's so wet that it has washed all the adhesive off and it won't stick to anything. So, anyhow. Okay, there it goes. So this is white, all right? 
and this is a very large rectangular piece. So in order to get this little dragon to show up, I need to have white in the background, all right? And so I went through several different processes. Um, I did not want the white to be visible, okay? So you can see here, I put a very thick border around this little guy, too thick, honestly, because it was starting to encroach on the design. Um, but I needed a border thick enough that it would hide the edge. So what I did first is I printed my decal in color on the right side of the clear decal paper. I printed it in reverse on the back of the white paper and I trimmed it out slightly smaller, okay? But the problem with that is you cannot put a sheet of white down that has a lot of very intricate little cuts. And I'll show you over here later. Um, these have like, you know, little antennas and little tails and little things all over the place. And this will just go everywhere. It's going to bend. It's going to be crazy. And I know it looks like it's behaving well right now. It's just because it's a very large rectangle. If this was not, it would not be. Okay. So I was going to do that. But unfortunately, because of the intricacies of these shapes that I was dealing with, the white would not be in a stable position, so I could not overlay this because I would go to put it on and where my white had this little piece up here, you know, I had put this on top of it there. And I wouldn't know that the white was slightly askew until I put this on and the white was already dry. So it was a mess, okay? So what I ended up doing is um, blowing up my image, putting a very narrow border around it, and then I put the in, I had to paint over these. So usually when I get my decals printed, it's a, a color laser printer, um, it holds the color really well, but because there's so much black in here, for some reason the color will stick to the decal paper really well, but the black won't. And because there was so much black in my designs, I painted everything with my diamond coat, um, clear coat, and gave it, you know, overnight to dry. Then I had to put this entire image, you know, just like this, onto a entire sheet of white decal paper, okay? Put that on, make sure there's no air bubbles there and everything. Let that dry overnight. Then the next day, come back and cut very carefully around each and every a little feather and everything else around my decals. And I'll go ahead and tip this over so you can see. I've got a couple really cool dragons here. Um, and get those carefully put on with the understanding that I have a coat of clear coat, a a coat of clear water slide decal and a coat of white water slide decal at this point. Trimmed out very intricately and needing to put that decal on here, soaking it just enough that the white would slide off the backing paper, but that the clear would not disengage from the white decal, okay? Because then I'd have to start all over again and get that on. Now, that was going well, but there were some little points that were not sticking, okay? And there is a decal solvent that you can get that, you know, sometimes works on decals. It would not work at all on this, and I don't know if it's because I had so many layers going on or what. So what I ended up doing is I had to get a, I have a tiny little cup Oh, they're like these little, actually they're tattoo parlor ink cups. And I put a drop of super glue in there. And then with the tip of a needle, I would put that underneath every little spot that the decal wasn't sticking, okay? And then, you know, with the tip of a needle, getting it to hold down until it was dry enough to stick all the way around. Then, once that was all dry, you know, wait again, 
come back and with some black black enamel black black gauze enamel in another one of my little ink cups and a tiny little paintbrush I had to come back because at that point you could still see the very white edge because even if I cut it perfectly you have so many layers that you're gonna see a white jagged outline okay so I had to come back with that black enamel and outline this entire thing and it's only making like a one millimeter wide border all the way around everything okay so that's where it is right now but I just wanted you to understand because I get a lot of people sending me pictures of dark colored machines with really fancy stuff on it and the problem is it is an outrageously horrendous process to be able to get something to show up on a dark colored paint if this was a white machine or a light color you know like a just to the very light colored blue green whatever these would show up no problem the single layer and we could move on okay so um, if you ever want a dark machine please don't expect miracles because unless you know everything smiles upon me and a outrageously expensive color printer drops into my lap that's going to work really well I don't see um, me being able to do more of this kind of thing you know on a regular basis at all but what I have <laughs> with all of that being said what I have here um, I did put a clear one coat of clear coat over the entire machine and that is because I was clear coating something else and I had a lot of it left in my paint gun so I decided to go ahead and do that so this has one coat of clear coat on it and I also knew that I was going to be experimenting with these decals so much I did not want to destroy the paint so having the clear coat on it gave me more confidence to be able to take on put off take on put off and not worry about this finish okay but what we have are these cool little dragons this is almost like a griffin kind of a little guy and this one now as far as the other decoration on this machine um, her owner and I had a discussion and we're trying to figure out what to do and I ordered these off of Etsy and on the website it looked like they were metallic gold I just got these in the mail this afternoon and they look like printed gold and I am afraid that if I put these on they're going to disappear just like my other ones but we won't know until we try so I am just going to go ahead and get one cut out and uh, you will know as soon as I do if these are actually going to show up on the dark paint. Okay, I have it cut out. It is wet. I'm going to try to slide it over here so it's going to be like a border. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Get it started. Get it wet one more time. And... There it goes. Okay. There's like this magic moment when everything releases. All right. Nope. It's going to disappear. See that? So it said metallic gold on Etsy, and it's not. It's painted gold. So that does not work, unfortunately. Okay, so I had a conversation with her owner, and um, I was able to put the word singer on here from an extra decal I had from singerdecals.com. And those are good decals. Those are, um, you know, they are a true metallic decal. This is from their sample sheets, okay? So with all of that being said, I have made a decision that, you know, I'm going to publicly announce so it will not be taken back. Um, from now on, if I paint a machine a dark color, I don't care what color, if it's a dark color, I will only do it if I can decal it with official singerdecal.com decals. And I'm specifying that company because 
There is another seller that does decals and does beautiful decals um, on Etsy and I, and but they don't use a true metallic. Their metallic is more of like a paint and even though it will show up on a dark background, it's not metallic, okay? And I just, you know, I can't go through this process. It was fun figuring out if I could and, um, you know, it's a one and done kind of thing. So at this point, I've just remasked over the little slide plate area. All of this was clear coated the first time when I got the whole machine. I just don't want clear coat to get in those little slides there. And I'm gonna go ahead, clean it up really good. And uh, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna, after I clean it, you know, cause I have fingerprints all over it. I'm gonna re-clear coat over the singer up here and down here just to make sure those are really protected. And then that is going to be it for this machine. So that's going to be it. Thank you so much for coming along on this adventure with me. I think the paint is beautiful. I love that shimmer amethyst paint. You know, it's really cool. Really cool colors. Anyway, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.